For this video, we're going to do a general overview of integrations within Hudu. We'll be talking about what features they have, how they connect to your asset entities, some basic understanding of how those connect to your other instances and outside applications for those integration connections, and some general troubleshooting guides. So let's take a look at what integrations we do have, and we'll navigate from there, showing off how they work. So if I go into my integrations here, you can see all of our active items. These are currently ones that we have set up within this specific environment. The ones below that are not highlighted or checked off are still supported within Hoodoo, but in this environment, as I said, we only have those with the check marks currently active. So let's take a look of how these integrations connect within Hoodoo. First, let's talk about how integrations work. Integrations work by connecting an API key and an instance into our Hoodoo environment and bringing in those asset entities. Now, all of these might work a little bit different depending on what items they are able to bring in, but in general, they will attach themselves to an asset entity attached below. So let's take a look at one of those examples and we'll use Synchro as a way to show off what integration connections look like. So using our example desktop, you'll see that we have a basic integration connected. This is bringing that information into Hoodoo with items like resyncing the card if things update within Hoodoo. We can rematch the card if we wanna change its location in the environment. And we also have the option of just fully deleting the card, which is a destructive action, but you do have the option if you'd like to use it. But integrations aren't limited to just the card that we bring in. Hoodoo has very malleable asset layouts and asset entities, and part of that means that we can still add on information. So while we have this card here, I can still edit this asset layout and add additional information. Just because we have an integration card does not mean that we're stopped from adding additional information to this. Going back now though, we also want to mention how Hoodoo syncs integrations. Integrations automatically sync every three hours, but like we see up here on the left, we can re-sync cards individually and we can sync them early if we'd like. In order to sync a card whenever, we can re-sync the whole integration by selecting this button up here and refreshing all of those items and we can have that start whenever we want. So now that we have a basic understanding of how integrations work, we can take a look at what's expected to set one of these up. We'll be using a couple different examples, but generally you'll see that it requires the same thing. So I'll go into our sync row using that as a similar example, our edit settings, and this will be normally how it looks. We're either looking for a domain, an API key, items like this that will connect our instance to theirs. When it comes to specific ways of setting up these integrations, we do have those videos and a playlist on our page to show you exactly how it's done. But getting back into it, let's talk about what it's like to set one of these up. We'll be asking for certain information and be sure that you don't have any extra spaces as that will cause the integration to fail. But when we have the information in here correctly, we get to determine a couple things. One of them is going to be how will this information be sorted within Hoodoo. In Synchro's case, they allow us to choose at these connections areas of where we want that to come into. So we have contacts within Synchro, and within Hoodoo, this drop down here, we get to choose which asset layout that information will be placed. So we have that set up. Now below that, they want us to know if we want to import devices. We'll keep that skipping, and also we want to make sure that those contracts are coming in. From there, we're going to have primary sync location, and that means that where will the primary assets be brought in? Not every integration will have this, but it's a good place to have and make sure that you're selecting the right spot so we don't have to rematch later on. After we have that and a successful test connection, we can start the sync within Hoodoo, which will give us these options down below. When you're bringing items into Hoodoo, unless you specify where they're going, we might not take them at all. So in this case, while we do have a location for our contacts, we do not have one for our networks and for our desktops. So that's where those filtered settings come in. We get to add sorted rules, and on the left side, we get to choose what's coming in from Synchro, and on the right side is where we're gonna place them. 
generally speaking, with the successful test connection, Hoodoo will be able to pull out what we're expecting to see from the integration, and then we use your existing asset layouts to place that item there. We can also create basic asset layouts directly if you're noticing that Hoodoo doesn't have exactly what you want. It's best to create a new one, modify it later, rather than having to place a default location and rematching manually afterwards. This will save you a bit of time, but that's just our recommendation when setting up your Hoodoo integrations. Now, in this case, we already have an unmanaged computer, so I'm just gonna remove that filter. And we're gonna go back and save our settings. Once we have a successful test connection, Hoodoo will ask you to match those companies. And match companies within Hoodoo is essentially pulling the same information from your integration and matching it to a company within Hoodoo. Of course, this title might here be a little bit different, maybe labeled slightly differently than what we have, but for sake of this, we'll be calling them companies and matching it likewise. In this case, we're pulling this from the integration on the left side, similar to those field settings and applying them to our matches here of what's already within Hoodoo. If you have a company in here and we don't automatically find that match for you, you are able to change that match with this button and search it from there and make that connection. Now these are sensitive to identify each other, so just because we don't find it initially doesn't mean we haven't found it at all. You can manually rematch it, or if you don't have it at all, Hoodoo has a great feature of creating a company with that name for you. Once we have the settings all put together, we can start the sync and that's where your information will start coming in. This area is meant to manage everything within your integrations, talking about your view logs. If you have issues going on, this is a great way of identifying where the hiccup is coming from. We have our edit settings to add those filters that we talked about before. So if you don't have items coming in, make sure you have those filters applied to make sure that we are able to organize and bring that in for you. Below, we have a danger section. Now, these are items that can cause permanent deletion, so we do advise you to be careful when you are selecting these items. So we have these here because you always have the option to delete and organize as you like, but these can be quite destructive, so when you are configuring them, make sure you're following the guide and doing everything as close to possible as you can, as we want to avoid any destructive actions that could remove any data. So now that we've taken a look at Synchro, let's take a look at some other examples of what it's like to set up that integration. Going into Line Guard, we can take a look at our edit settings, and this is going to be what we expect from a Line Guard integration. Instead of having a primary sync location, because in this case we're using inspectors, instead we get a proper connection, and then we scroll down and determine the sort settings here. So since we have a lot of inspectors possible with LionGuard, we have all of the options here to make sure that we get everything that we require. And that's why we don't quite have that primary sync location. Another example we're gonna take a look at is going to be our Kaseya BMS integration. Rather than using an API key, we are still looking for the domain name, but instead we're looking for other information like client credentials or sorry, user credentials when setting this up. That's going to be the little bit of differences. These all have their own settings, but again, we do have those guides to make it as clear as possible. We're just showing off some examples so you have a good idea of how Hoodoo integrations work in general. So now let's move on to talking about troubleshooting within Hoodoo. So now that we've showed off some features, talked about how the integrations connect and what they connect to, let's talk about those troubleshooting tips. I'll be using Synchro again as another example, and let's start off with a basic one. When you're setting up your integration, let's stop the sync right now. Always be sure to test your connection. This is a great way of making sure that everything was set up initially, those initial credentials that you input. If there is a fail, it either means that there's something on the other side we need to double check, or maybe something was mistyped. So let's talk about what can happen with a mistyped item. I'll go into those edit settings, and we really wanna be sure that you're checking to make sure there's no extra spaces behind or in front of certain items that you're bringing in for the integration. These are considered characters and will cause that failure to happen, so we want to best avoid it. Especially with your API keys, you'll notice here as I add a space, 
it does count it as a character. So if you're copying and pasting from somewhere, make sure you're not adding extra items to it or an extra space in front of it, as it might not be initially detectable, but it will be a way that an integration might fail. So if you'll see here, I have that space. We'll go back into our synchro after saving settings. And I'll test that connection again, and you'll see that we have an invalid character, and that's that little space that we have included. These are super easy. We just get to go in front, click out here, and we'll notice that we have this. And we can also remove the one in front, save those settings, and test that connection again. So that will be something that is more universal, of course. Copying and pasting does have the error, as well as manually typing. So just be sure that you're not adding extra spaces or that you're writing information exactly the same. A great little tip is make sure that you have your API key saved somewhere important. Many of these integrations only show you the key once and then remove it and Hoodoo does not show you when we have it stored in our edit settings, you are unable to copy and paste your API key from there. So if you aren't able to find it or you mistyped it and it's not working, it's good to have that somewhere safe so that you can always bring it back into your settings whenever and make sure that it's correct and that's not causing the issue. Finally, we can also, additionally, we can take a look at saving the settings. What we can do is take a look at the logs. So if I start the connection, even with a failed error, we can still view the logs here and find out where that connection is failing. This will show us exactly what we're looking for and tell us where the error occurred and at what part. So if you do get a failed test connection and you're wondering why it's failing and you've tried that other mention before, this is a great place to start. Finally, and one that's incredibly important, when you're bringing in information into Hoodoo, make sure that that other application has very clean data. When you're integrating with another application, if that data brought in isn't fully organized, you now have to manage organizing two different applications. So while this does seem like a relatively simple item, it is incredibly important to note that having the right naming conventions coming into Hoodoo, making sure that everything is properly organized in that other instance, so that way that connection makes that integration as easy as possible for you. We want to make sure that you're not managing and organizing two integrations or two other applications and instead get to bring that data in and use Hoodoo as a tool and that way you can get right into your documentation. Now, if you are experiencing specific issues, please reach out to us at our support site. If you're having trouble with an integration, we do have those guides and a playlist for them on our channel. But if you're encountering issues, do not hesitate to comment on the video or reach out to us on support. We do check all of those items and we want to make sure that we can provide you with the best information possible. So please feel free to reach out to us and everyone have a wonderful rest of your day.